Ladies and gentlemen, this interview has been uh, decades in the making. Moments is getting ready to happen, and the tour is getting ready to jump off. It's called the Culture Tour. I got three-sixths of one of the greatest groups of all time, and I'm even including that in rap groups, too, because they got bars as well. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we got Ricky Bell, Ronnie DeVoe, and Johnny Gill of New Edition. Yeah, what yeah. up, That's what I'm talking about. I'm bringing the energy. Yeah, yeah, it's like we 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 like Wu Tang, right? We like NWA on the R and B side, right? You guys did it first, man. The world is excited for the culture tour, man. It's been so many years in the making. We've been waiting with bated breath to see the whole crew together again, and it is a beautiful thing. Um, what made everything happen to where it worked out to where now is the time? Um, you know, one thing about this business and us as a group. It's like you can't really plan down or exactly what time is going to happen. It's like kind of like, you know, we, we get together and we talk about certain things and things that we want to make happen it's as far as our administration and how we operate. And sometimes we can't even figure out, you know, even with each other. And we just kind of step back and trust God and just let him operate. And now is the time that we felt he chose us to do this. Right. Indeed. And you guys have a very stacked lineup. I mean, you got Uncle Charlie Wilson, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Who, you know, was a beast in his own right. You got Jodeci. You know, who... No, no, I'm listening. Go ahead. Keep yeah, I mean, Jodeci, who, who like, you could see the new edition DNA in Jodeci as well, you know, yeah. and it's just kind of like a full circle of just artistic awesomeness coming together. And yeah, when yeah. we think about what this set list is going to look like on the tour, um, what are some of the songs that are not gonna make it? Wow, oh, man. there's quite a few actually. That's what we was just talking about earlier. It's yeah. like, yo, it's like, and we're doing it. It's ninety minutes, and we can't. It's so much catalog that you can't even. You know, we're trying to touch on some of, of quite a few things. Yeah. But there's some that's just not gonna even make it this time right. around. Yeah, especially when you, you think know. about the depth of New Edition, right? Yeah. It's, just the new edition records, Candy Girl, Telephone Man, Jealous Girl, right? With you all the way, right? Let's be friends. Some of the crowd favorites a to a certain love. extent, a little yeah. bit of love, right? There's yeah, so many almost. things. But then when you peel off and you dig into Johnny's catalog and yeah. you dig into Bell Biv the Bowls catalog and Bobby and Rouse, there's just so much that has to get pushed to the side, right? For all of the major hits to just bust you in the face. Trust me, you're going to hear everything you want to hear, right. but you're not going to hear everything that you want to hear at the same time. <laughs> you know? right. We'll yeah. just have to hum those songs to ourselves when we leave. You know what I mean? As a matter of fact, what we're going to do, catch the 90 minutes now, but in Vegas, we might stress this show a little bit yeah. more. Yeah. Oh, so let's talk about Vegas for a second. Are you guys about to do a residency? Later this year, yeah, for sure. Later this year. Yeah. 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 Wow. Now that that's a beautiful thing. Because like, you know, even when you think about everything that you guys bring to the table, people talk about people who can't be seen or touched in verses. Mm. Yo, I mean, the only people new edition could go against is new edition. Mm. That would be crazy. Right. Wouldn't that be crazy? Right. Y'all are like, your own ops. Yeah, yeah. That's so we'll take that. Hold yeah. on. Let me let me pat you on the back. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but if you did want to have some fun and scrimmage with another group, you know, that's in the business, man, and like really roll those joints out for the fandom, who would who could you see like you know being able to go toe to toe, at least hang for a couple rounds? Listen, you're gonna have to wow. smash, you're gonna have to smash guy. And with a little Joe to see, and then put a little Tony, Tony, Tony up in that flavor, and then slam down with some boys, the men. And I think, you know, we, we got a discussion. A you know, we got a discussion. Other than that, it's going to have to be the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> and time is ticking on that one, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Man, like, I mean, it's just such a beautiful moment to see it come together because, I mean, you know, everybody who follows you guys knows that, you know, it's not always rosy, but family will fight, but real family will figure it out and, right. and get it back together again. Um, what was that bridge that was built to get the lines of communication going again to where we could see all six of y'all together again? Well, I, I was just saying to someone yesterday that, you know, I remember the day that, that, that Kobe playing went down. Uh, and I remember there was shortly after that, we also had another incident with Ronnie's brother who worked with me. 
and we almost lost him. And it was one of those moments where I know for me, I just stopped in my tracks and said, and had to do a little bit of, of reflecting. And it was like, if that had been one of my brothers that we had gotten that call about, um, all of the internal issues that we have, some of the things that we go through, button heads, how much would it really mean? Right. What would have, what we would have, and I don't think if we, any, any one of us had gotten that call, there would have been a dry eye on each, on each call. So you and put things back in perspective. And what it was, it wasn't even about working together. I talked to every individual, not about working, but understanding that we had worked and, and, and had accomplished so much together um, that, you know, whether we ever step on stage ever again in life, that we have to, this is not about working. This was about, you know, if one of us, God forbid, something happened, that we are to stand there and stand in the midst as brothers for in the gap for each That's other right. because, you know, we got to know there's no rhyme or reason for us to not know all each other's babies' names and right. to make sure that they understand and know who's there. And uh, it was a, those, it was about that. And as we began to start to talk and continue to start communicating more, just call and check in on each other, just, you know, and that's how it all kind of, kind of snowballed and, uh, and it ended up to this place. But it was never even about the intentions on working together. It was about right. building, rebuilding our, 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 our relationship. And it was never even about rebuilding our relationship. What I've learned with when you lived a long time and you've been knowing and you grow up together, sometimes you get so comfortable with each other that we don't realize that people are constantly evolving and changing. And sometimes we're talking to the old person, trying to speak the language of, a, a, of to the new person that you think you're talking to who's the old person. Right. So a lot of times the communication gets lost and gets crossed because we're not talking to you're not talking to the new person you're talking to, to this old person and it's so it gets crossed and that's what i think happens to a lot of people is when you talk about people your friends that you've been knowing for a long time you don't see them for a while but still you'll go and talk to them and try to treat them the way you used to treat them and you don't realize until you pay attention to see how far they've grown where they've gone to and understanding that i'm not who you think i used to be right right, right. and yes. the crazy thing is like you know the og any fans grew up watching y'all as kids and here we all are now with y'all grown ass men with kids of your own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the women still love you. So, you know, at this point in you guys' lives, are the female fans more aggressive now than they were back when you guys were coming up? Cause I know it's hard to defend people off. Cause I know everybody's booed up and, you know, got various situations going on. Like how is it now compared to back then? I mean, they're, you know, definitely not as crazy as they were a lot of, you know, like you said, we're older, they're a lot older, they have kids of their own. So it's not really so much as the physical aggression as it may be, you know, digital, social media, and just your messages and comments and DMs being full and, yeah, you know, all the time. So it's just more in that way. But listen, you know, we appreciate it. It's, yeah. you know, what's a pleasure for us is, and we sometimes we do these meet and greets and we would hear certain friends say like you don't know like i've been waiting 30 40 years to, to for this moment to meet mm -hmm. you guys and just seeing how much it means to them you know seeing how much like you know we appreciate the fact that you know people had to spend their hard-earned money you know get dressed up go out to dinner whether it be a date we even meet some people that fly in from other countries right. just to see us so that that's what motivates us to want to be at our best you know to give them that ex you know what they're expecting from us. yeah but there's some aggressive ones out yeah. there trust me we're a little older now there's some ladies out there that get right to the point they cut to the chase like johnny <laughs> oh they look them up and down like right. until you can get it <laughs> right it's been rough <laughs> backstage now you guys are the you are the underage ones now <laughs> <laughs> the tables have turned so you know i know you guys work so hard in the in the gym you know to maintain a level of physique you know be able to like you know dance and sing is it easier now to bust these moves because yeah, of muscle memory or you got to dig a little deeper in yourself, it's you know, as you get ready for this new, new journey? It's muscle memory. You have to dig deep. Um, we're of age now. So uh, where we could rehearse four hours straight back in the day, like again, again, after and again and again and after and again and again. It might be a little bit more like an hour and a half, and then a, we got to definitely take a break. 
right. um, <laughs> the physicality in it all is 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 different, right? At the age that we are, honestly, right. you know, uh, once you're finished, because we start at eleven o'clock, and sometimes we don't finish to damn near nine, you know, and we're not on the dance floor or in front of the mirrors, or we don't have our mic in our hands every step of the way. There's other meetings and fittings and different things that have have to happen in that time. But um, when we get home, it's uh, Epsom salt, you know, Johnny, Johnny's pulling out the icy hot and the bay yeah. gay. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's that thing that we knew, like no pain, really no gain. Uh, we, you got to get to that point where you feel like you want to quit, right? But bust through because there's so much pleasure, right? And there's so much ease on the other side of that. And there's so much joy on the other side of that as well. Like when we show up and the show is like it was for the AMAs and we're hearing from those new edition for lifers that, yo, I can't wait to come and see y'all because y'all look like yesterday, right? right? We could have very well showed up and fell flat. You know, uh, they ain't really got it no more. You know, Rick's hand is here, Ron's hand is here, and Johnny's mm -hmm. hand ain't even out at all. Yeah. Right, but we made sure that everything is precision and precise, and um, we we bring more than 100% of ourselves, if you can, really, to the table when it comes to our craft, and we really can't wait to explode on the scene. Yo, and that investment that you guys put into that, it definitely pays for itself when we see you guys perform live. It's a moment every time. Now, you know, even in the music bag, you know, because like, you know, a lot of times to create and craft an album, you'll make like 20 songs just to give us 10. What are some of the dopest records that you guys have in the vault that for whatever reason, the fans never, never got a chance to hear? Maybe sample clearances and even with your solo records as well. Like, you know, mm -hmm. what are some of the dope records that are sitting somewhere that only y'all know about? Man, man, that's quite a few. I yeah. mean, especially on the solo side, right? Yeah, right? But yeah. new edition, for some Shoot. reason, it seemed like we, there was a few. Yeah, I mean, but, Jimmy you know, those are the ones that kind of fell to the bottom to a certain extent. Like, right. most yeah. of the stuff we recorded in E-wise kind of made it to the top and found its way on a record, but I know individually, there's some stuff, man. There's a, a record called, um, dang, something that we did with Divine right here in Atlanta. We did like five joints with Divine. Oh my God. Those were some BBD records that I think definitely need to see the light of day at some point for right. sure. Right. What kept them from coming out when you guys made them? Yeah, yeah. Hey. Um, just business deal situations. We couldn't quite figure it out mm -hmm. how to make it happen. Right. Gotcha. It's timing, right? It's yeah. timing. We and we talked about that. We want it. Our timing is one thing, and God's timing is something totally right. different. Because yes. if it was up to us, right, we would have been on the road in 2017 after the movie came out. The fanfare was there, but it wasn't God's timing, right? Yeah, right. Like we were trying to fit a square, you know, circle peg into a round yeah. circle, or however that the hell yeah. you say that. But um. It just feels good to be at a place now where um, somebody was asking us a question the other day and I didn't get a chance to an answer about like, what are you most proud of, right? And I think the inspiration that we've had on a generation of people that have come up in the music industry, but even more importantly, still being here to inspire even more people, right? That's that's like that. This it's just so dope. The position that we sit in, and this tour is for the culture, right? It's gonna uplift some people. It's gonna put them in a happy place. It's gonna take them back. They'll be able to forget about some of their challenges for that. You know, three four hours that they're in the building with Joe to see Uncle Charlie and ourselves. But then uh, being able to touch some communities and and some organizations and different things that need uh some resources right that we can deliver as well that's one of the things that we're connecting to as we move across the country so man most proud of the fact that all six of us and even including my <laughs> uncle brooke Payne, seven of us are still here in our whole entourage to really spread some joy and some love across the world that's what's up now um you know with the catalog so vast across all y'all, I'm sure y'all each have your individual favorite records. Johnny, I'll start with you. What is your favorite record, whether it's your solo joint 
or, you know, part of the new edition, Bell Biv DeVoe, RBGB, you know, like so many incarnations uh, of the group, right? You know? Man, that's a tough one. Jesus Christ. That, the, oh, wow. Um, uh, it's too hard. I, yeah, that's a tough one. <laughs> I'd have to something. go, yeah. maybe, can you stand the rain? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I have yeah. to go, can you stand the rain? What about you, Rick? Oh, man, it's like Johnny is tough. You know, Can You Stand the Rain is definitely one of my favorites. And if it isn't love, yeah. you know, for the just the excitement of the routine, yeah. you know, the precision of it, I think it's some of the most unique choreography ever. Um, and it's just a great song, you know, yeah. that's definitely out, you know, outlasting, you know, hanging through his time. Yeah. That yeah. choreography is up there with Thriller because this move is one of my go-tos. Uh, <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yo, like, if yeah. I can't hit nothing else, I can... <laughs> <laughs> that video is iconic, man. Ronnie, what about you? Oh, man. I, I'm The first one that comes to mind is the first one, um, Candy Girl. Mm. Uh, something about that record just really opened the door for everything that came after they caught us at a point in our lives where Maurice Starr really captured the essence of who we were. And it wasn't the same at other times to a certain extent with other records, right? Mm -hmm. I think um, Johnny's first record, My, 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 like captured the essence of who he was, you know, at the time mm -hmm. for us, Poison. But um, Candy Girl, definitely. Uh, the, the, you know, the, the R&B, you know, the, the reflection of the Jacksons, right? The hip hop being infused in it too. Like, you know, we was hip hop from day one. It was a little fluffy, but it was still <laughs> hip hop. Um, but yeah, that's one of my favorites for sure. And I love uh, the crowd participation in the sing-along of Mr. Telephone Man is one of my favorite songs to perform in the show, but yeah. Yeah, you know, like y'all have those songs that take you back to where you were when you first heard those songs. Like, I think I saw the video from Mr. Telephone Man the first time. Remember when HBO used to play music videos in yeah. between movies? Like, that was the first time I saw Mr. Telephone Man and possibly even Candy. And from that point on, I'm like, yo, these kids, they look like they're from around the way. They're singing and they're rapping at the same time. It was a beautiful thing to be a part of, man, because, you know, hip hop and, you know, and, and that style of R&B was still new. So it was yeah. a breath of fresh yeah. air. Yeah, absolutely. But, Big time. So, um, you know, before we get up out of here, man, uh, you guys have proven that, you know, you can get in the car. Sometimes you got to pull over, make a pit stop, you know, in the NASCAR tip, but you get back in the, go the car, keep going. For groups out there that want to achieve the level of longevity that you guys have, because, you know, for a lot of, you know, groups, you know, it's just a moment in time and they break up. But you guys, you know, will do separate things get back together and still keep it rolling. What's a word of advice to groups out there so they can have some level of longevity like you guys have had? I, I think it starts with understanding the business. You can get so caught up into the screen, but you got to remember come Monday morning, you can't, de can't deposit that into the bank account. So sometimes we can get so caught up into wanting to see having the screen and the pat on the back, the accolades and all the other stuff, but it really starts with the business. And then it also starts with, especially for groups, to understand that people are constantly growing and evolving. And one of the things that we talked about when we first even got back together, and we still remind each other, hold each other accountable, and that is uh, when you start talking about the word consideration, con being considerate, it has, it's powerful because it makes you have to think about whatever choice and decisions that you're making, how does it affect everyone else around you? And it's those things that you have to learn and you have to put in place. Structure is another thing that you have to have that can help to keep and make less room for errors when you have and create structure. And uh, all those things I think can, we've learned the hard way, but I think it has taught us uh, and got us to this point uh, with how we restructured our business, how we learn how to deal with, how we're gonna communicate with each other, hold each other accountable, but still being respectful and being considerate. Um, those are things, the key things that I think is important when you got different personalities in, in a group and everyone has an, an opinion and you have to make sure everyone's opinion is respected and everyone is heard. That's important, very important. Um, I would just add to it as well. Um, I think when you set four or five guys up, even women, you know, it's a setup for conflict. 
And if you can just accept that nothing is personal, personal, and that being in a group, you know, and you're trying to be creative together and make all oh, there's so many decisions that have to be made creative decisions, business decisions, that you're not all going to agree every single time on everything. Mm -hmm. And if you can accept the fact that that's all a part of it and that you won't get your way all the time personally, and it's not, you know, a personal thing against you. It's just a part of the system. It's a part of the, the process. And I mm -hmm. think a lot, if you look at like every group, whether it's Joe to see or guy or new edition or whoever, Every group essentially goes through the same thing on a personal level within each other, you know, as far as conflict goes. Right. But if you could just decide amongst yourself that you're going to stick to it and resolve this and get to it, even if you have to step back for a minute, yeah. except that that's all a part of the process, you know, I think you'll be good. Yeah, it is. Great word. So, great word. Is there an album that follows this tour? Uh, shoot, while we're out there, uh, we're going to be with each other for a good amount of time. We actually started recording the record in Los Angeles. So uh, right now we're really just, um, uh, I think focus is important, right? right? Like if you're trying to do too many things at once, you know, right. they say a jack of, you know, all trades, but a master of none, like right. we're mastering this show right now because right. we got 30 cities coming. But at the same time, started recording a record in LA. We'll be out there on the road with each other. Johnny's got the most fabulous uh, bus on the planet. So, you know, <laughs> okay. the studio is there. So yeah. we're we gonna be rocking and rolling. Ralph's gonna have one as well. But those kinds of things we're definitely gonna do because music is the thing that is the driving force uh, for us. It didn't start that way. It was about performing for us, honestly, like how do we make the girl scream and win the talent show and go buy some pizza, you know, <laughs> with the money that we just won and music was kind of put on us, but we know that's the thing that allows people to come see us perform. And we want to get back to that. Our, our last record as new edition was a number one record, you know, right. off of Johnny's album. So uh, we know that we can still do that. And that wasn't that, that long ago. Oh, yeah, so right. it's definitely time for new music as well. Yeah, I've never seen a fandom love a group as much as I see them love New Edition and everything associated with it. You know what I mean? So if you build it, they will come. You know what I mean? So that's Thank exciting. You. All right, so you guys have always been unified. Multiple people working as one mind. I want to play a quick game with y'all. It's called Same Damn Time. I'm going to ask you questions about members in the group. Y'all have to answer at the same damn time at the okay. count of three. Are y'all ready? Yeah, let's go. All right, cool. Who is the best rapper in New Edition? One, Ronnie. two, three. Ronnie. Ronnie. Okay, okay. Everybody agreed with that one. <laughs> Who is the best hooper in New Edition? Mike. Mike. You want to do the one, two, three? You do the one, two, three. Yeah, I'll do the one, go. two, three on the next one, all right? all right? Who is the best dresser in New Edition? One, two, three. All Ronnie. of us. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a couple. I heard all of us. I heard, I, I think I heard Ronnie. Ronnie. Yeah, Ronnie, that's in me. Yo, Johnny, they, yeah. Johnny they, they were giving you hell in the new edition biopic. Was his outfits really that off when y'all first linked up? No, nah, Johnny had uh, a sense was, of his you know, own style. Yeah. Man. Like The only thing that threw us off was the boots for the Johnny. Boy right? boots. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny would have his cowboy boots on, and you know, not you know, very many people want cowboy boots. Well, not black. Exactly. <laughs> you know, you gotta understand. I wasn't from the hood. I was, you know, <laughs> middle class. So right. we understood and knew. You know, I was exposed to cowboy boots. Right, right, right. <laughs> Do you still have cowboy boots? Right. Oh right. no, I, I upgraded, but I still walk with rocks and boots though. That's what's up. All right, cool. I got a couple more. Okay. Who's usually the last person to show up? One, two, three. Ralph. Ronnie. <laughs> I heard Ralph, I heard Ronnie. Ronnie. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Well, the the party's is uh, divided yeah, on that one. Last but not least. Go ahead. Overall, Ralph for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but for right. uh, rehearsal, I might be the last one. Okay. Well, I, that, that varies because I it changes between. Oh, you? We rotate. Oh, and Callie yeah, Johnny was movie. damn sure the last nah, one. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> That's your backyard, ain't it? All right. <laughs> right. You're the closest. All right, last but not least. Uh, Cause this person has had to show up quite a bit over the years. Who is the peacemaker in new edition? One, two, three. Me, 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 me. I was about to say Ronnie again, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Amazing. Hey, if you talk about the center of it all, come on, man. Look at me. Look at me. Play <laughs> okay. And if you want to talk about who brings the message and preach, come on, man. Oh, but you we know what? That's why you word. guys are like Voltron. It oh. takes all of y'all to form to make it happen, come together, and work out, man. Yo, Johnny. Ricky, Ronnie, thank you guys so much for carving out time. I mean, I, anytime I run into Ronnie, I always tell him, like, hey, if, if anything ever happens, tag me in. Wow. I love y'all that much. Man, I'm a fan you, of the music bro. that much. Man, and you, if you haven't heard this 20 times today, this is me telling you for the 12th. You guys are loved. Wow. You guys are important. Wow. Thank you. Man. You guys mean so much wow. to thank so you. many people around the world man you have no idea what your music has done for people what it's done for a, a generation and generations right. and and i don't even think i've seen y'all do the greatest thing that you guys will ever do yet it's a it's a book that's still being written man Exactly. Wow. Yep. wow. Talking about it, yo. He coming for the preacher, John. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. I'm, 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 ju I'm just speaking how I feel, man. Like, you know, from the first time I heard John Records back in the day, and even, you know, with the addition of Johnny and the, you know, the departure of Bobby and the return of Bobby and the Belle Biv DeVoe and everything. Like, I've been along every step of the way because y'all music speak to me in, in just such a certain way. And it's cool in it for it's cool RB. That like even like somebody who has a gun and you know and yeah. <laughs> listens to hip hop all day can connect to because like love is a common emotion and mm -hmm. you guys touch on those emotions so well and do it in such a slick and fly way that I don't think no one will ever be able to replicate what it is that y'all y'all do man for real for real. Thanks, Thanks man. Thank you, I'm gonna tell you one thing. We about to go back into rehearsal, right? We was trying to pull Ralph out here. But he was working on this part in the show. Oh my goodness, yo! Yeah. I mean, like, I think it just lifted itself to one of my favorite parts yeah. in the show. So y'all, yeah, y'all, I was, I was gonna ready to run Woo. to the ATM and get some change. Ah. <laughs> I know it's gonna be special. So for everybody who wants to buy tickets, the first date begins when. February 16th, yes, Columbus, Columbus, Georgia. Georgia. It's, it's going Florida. down in a major way. It is the culture yeah. tour. Go to the New Edition IG page. Also the website, I imagine, as well, to find mm -hmm. out when New Edition is hitting a city near you. And I'm uh, definitely going to see about that residency in Vegas because I know that's going to be a vibe. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yo, man. Thank you, bro. Absolutely. Yo, much love to y'all. Continue <laughs> success. And thank you for being who you are. Yeah, yeah. man. Thank you. God much bless. love, guys. Peace. All right.